please welcome Brother Bo Sanchez. And how many of you believe that nothing is impossible with God? Amen. Put your arm around that person beside you. Tell that person your miracles are on the way. Amen. I believe in that. I know that some of you are going through some impossible situations. I know that some of you, you're praying for your daughter. You're praying for your son. Some of you are praying for a broken marriage. Some of you are praying for an impossible situation in your job or in your business or in your relationships or in your finances. Hear me when I say this. Your God has not stopped yet in the miracle-making business. He will continue to perform miracles today and tomorrow and in your life. Amen? Amen. Yesterday... A, one of our leaders came up to me and she said, you know, Brother Bo, last Sunday I brought my aunt here. She has breast cancer. We prayed for her here in this place. She left, she went to the doctor. The doctor said, there is no more any need for an operation. I believe in miracles because miracles happen here in this place. Everybody say, this is a place of miracles. Not only physical miracles. I have a letter here from someone. Just read about this letter yesterday evening. It says, Hi, Brother Bo. I'm 20 years old. It's just so good, you know, when a young person writes to me. But I did your 30-day retreat, Live Like a Dying Man, and it completely changed my life. I've been taking for granted the life given to me before. I had before this personal retreat, but now I treasure every single second of it. My family even thought I was suicidal since I was suddenly mushy and hugging them every chance I got. I even got them presents that I was postponing to give to them. Today, and she talks about, you know, she was not a religious person and etc. And then she says that, you know, it, um, there are memories that I will treasure forever. She says, I'm, I'm one of those people you hugged uh, during the feast. And it was the first time I was there and I was so blessed. And she says, the feast is truly one big, happy, loving family of God. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Young people are coming to know God, and that's one sign, one great miracle from the Lord happening here in this feast. Are you ready to receive your miracles today? If you are, pray with me now. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, everybody say, Today I receive all of God's love for me. Today I open myself to the unbounded, limitless, overflowing abundance of God's universe. Today, to your blessings. Today, so that I become more like Jesus every day. Today I proclaim that I am God's beloved. I'm God's servant. I'm God's powerful champion. And because I am blessed, I will bless the world. We're going to read Matthew chapter 6, verse 19. We're going to ask God to speak to us and let the Word of God change you. Extend your hand towards the Word in reverence and expectation and sing with me. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Verse 19, chapter 6, Gospel of Matthew. Do not store up riches for yourselves on earth, where moths and rust destroy, and robbers break in and steal. Instead, store up riches for yourselves in heaven. Let's say that one line together. Instead, Store up riches in heaven. Everybody say heaven. heaven. Where moths and rust cannot destroy and robbers cannot break in and steal. For your heart will always be where your riches are. You know, I have, I have a tiny, 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 tiny business in the U.S. Very tiny. But you know what? I still go to the bank once in a while, tell the banker, my, the manager there, wire a few of my dollars to the U.S. 
And in a split second, boom, the money goes from here, the Philippines, all the way to the U.S. Jesus is saying that there is a way for you to wire your material wealth here in the world and transfer it to heaven. There's a way. He said, store your riches in heaven. That means, everybody say, it's possible. And you ask me how? You give. When you give because you love, what happens? Giving is not a, an expense. Giving is an investment. Say that with me. Giving is an investment. Is an investment. It's an investment to your eternal life. It's an investment to the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. Did you get that? Amen. Let's pray together. Place your hand over your chest. Everybody say, Lord, make me a wise investor. Help me. To be more generous. Be more generous. Help, me Help me to put my wealth, put my, my, wealth riches my riches in heaven. In Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. Give the Lord a big hand and worship and love Him and honor Him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hug someone beside you again. Tell that person your miracles are on your way. They're on the way. Hallelujah. The other week, I was with a friend of mine. Her name is Nova Arias. And she's someone who... She's someone who works with me in Shepherd's Voice Publications. She's a writer. She's an editor. She's also a radio person. And I didn't have a car two weeks ago, and she, she was going somewhere, so she had a car, and I, I rode. I was a passenger. She was a driver. And there was lots of traffic. And I really thank God for the traffic because in the midst of that traffic, she gave me a fantastic personal story. And I want you to hear this story. Please watch the video. Hi, I'm Nova Arias. Uh, I'm a writer, producer of commercials, and a broadcaster at the same time. And I'm here to tell you about the story uh, of an experience of mine about maybe more than a decade ago where I believe I had a near-death experience. So there was this one night uh, I was asleep and me being a light sleeper, I heard this monster-like sound uh, um, only to realize that it was me having a hard time breathing. Um, I knew that I was asleep on the bed but my conscious self no, it was, it was awake and I could see the room. So I woke up to that sound and I felt uh, that my chest was heavy. No, as if uh, parang merong nakadagan na something. And I was telling my body to move. I was telling my toe to move, thinking na baka binabangungot ako. And I was just lying there listening to that sound of me gasping for breath. And then the pain on my chest became so excruciating that when I couldn't take it anymore, when I couldn't take the pain anymore, I suddenly heard a loud bang. After that, there was total silence and total darkness. And I didn't feel the pain anymore. Thinking I was asleep or thinking I, might, I had my eyes closed, I opened my eyes. So, from total darkness, biglang, it, everything was white all around me. Not a single dot, not a single speck of black to set my eyes on. And I was looking around, no, wala nga akong makita, and it was so white. So I decided to look at my feet, just to have something to see. The minute I looked down, I don't know, it's suddenly an ocean of flowers appeared all around me. And I started saying, wow, wow. And then I started walking 
wala akong nakita ng ibang tao so i was thinking maybe it wasn't my time yet but i just kept on walking um, looking around in awe of what i was seeing and all i could say was wow and that was all i remember the next day when i woke up i had food particles blocking my throat but i had no recollection whatsoever of what occurred the night before and it happened more than a decade ago it was only until of course i would narrate the story to friends and you know they would say oh baka nabinangungot ka lang or baka panaginip lang yan you know or maybe what you saw was just a product of your imagination or something I decided to tell her, to ask her about that experience of mine. And I said, it's still so vivid to me after more than 10 years. What was that? So she interviewed me. Sabi niya, what, what uh, happened before you went to that other place? And I said, well, I in explain ko na, I had this pain in my chest and it was so painful. I couldn't breathe. And then I heard a loud explosion. And that's when she said, you know what, I think you had a near-death experience. Because sa lahat ng mga nakausap niya who had similar um, experiences, there was one common factor that, uh, well, sort of proved that it was an authentic near-death experience. And it was this, that explosion. Well, anyway, and she said, you know what, Nova, you would really know if it's an authentic experience, an authentic near-death experience, if it was life-changing, sabi niya. And that's when I started thinking na, oh my God, it was life-changing because every time I recall that dream, parang, you know, death became such a reality that any time I could go, any time that the Lord picks for me to join Him again, I could go. And I remember after that experience, Wala nang saysay sa akin yung kung anong brand ng bagang dala ko, <laughs> anong brand ng damit ang bibilin ko, or kung may iPad ba ako, or wala. So, it had no meaning at all. And I went back to living uh, simply. I would always say I went back to the basics. Um, I lived without a ref. <laughs> I lived without a TV, a TV set. I gave away my stuff, the, the ones that are still very much usable but I don't need anymore, that I felt I didn't need anymore, I gave them away to friends, family. And I was just living on my basic needs. And I think that experience taught me how to be more generous. Dahil nga, ang dami kong gamit na hindi ko naman kailangan, and I gave them away. Um, I learned how to give to charity. The reality of death woke me up. If living life means just being good, good to yourself, good to other people, it's a very tall order, <laughs> but at least trying to live a good life and trying to, to love even those we don't know, if that would take me back to that place you know, where I saw that ocean of flowers, maybe, maybe there is not that I doubted it, but if that was heaven, then wow, I'd like to go back there. I may be scared of, of dying, scared of the manner of death, you know, that the manner of my passing, to the other, passing on and uh, going to the other side. But I am not scared of where I will be. She had a near-death experience, she says. I, I'm, I'm not gonna say or judge, you know, and whether it's authentic or not authentic. What I do know is that it changed her life. That she almost died, bangungot, we call it in Tagalog, and she saw herself walking amidst an ocean of flowers. Can I ask you a question? How many of you want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. You do? How many of you want to go to heaven right after the feast? Uh, four or five of you. Okay, how about tomorrow? Next week? Very, very few of you. But how many of you want to go to heaven eventually? All right, all right.
Everybody say, I want to go to heaven. <laughs> heaven is real. The reason why I wanted you to listen to that story is because heaven is very real. What I sh want to share with you now is about my mother. My mother is 84 years old. And as a small child, I learned that she lived during the war. And I was so excited when I heard about that as a small boy. I said, Mommy, how does Magellan look like? My mother laughed and she said, no, I'm not 100, 450 years old, you know. How does Jose Rizal look like? I asked, no, no, no. You know, and she said that she did not live during World War I. It's only World War II during the Japanese time. And she would tell me story after story. One of her favorite stories she would tell me, and, you know, sometimes, you know, you know how mothers are. When they, did I ever tell you about that story? Of course, you've heard it a thousand times, but, you know, just let her, let her say the story. She talked about Japanese money. In fact, I've got authentic ones here in my pocket right now. This is the Japanese money during her time. And she said that at the beginning of the Japanese occupation, they were using this money, and it was pretty normal using it like any other money. But then, as the months went by, she said that the money started losing in value. Have you heard this story before? No? Not very much. I should tell you now. You know, my mom said, little by little, what they could buy with one Japanese or five 